So the vertical farming scene, like in in general, I think is like a it's an overpumped system. Like uh, there's too many big corporations, too many big uh, venture capitalist funds that goes into uh, vertical farming simply because it sounds like a, a cash cow. So uh, with all the ROIs on three or four or five years, they all think that it's a uh, it's something that you come into easily. But in in some regard, the technology is is overdeveloped and underdeveloped at the same time. So there's too much that requires too much. So it's it's like a it's an incomplete story about a future event. Major corporations that make more and more uh, big scale farms, and then they turn into chapter 14 foreclosure, or they go uh, belly up and shut down in the countries they start in to like very shortly after they start. So it's it's very much um, it's it's not even a cutthroat business. It's just too many people start up and thinking it's it's simple and it's easy and it's it's fast, but it's just not. So my name is Alex Fikai and I'm working with uh, CEA and Vertical Farming for five years with my own farm and uh, have people around us that has helped us uh, who has more than 100 years experience within uh, stackable growing, so uh, indoor farming or, or container farm. So I've done projects in, in France and Spain, the UK, uh, Czech, uh, now Austria, so pretty much a little here and there everywhere. So uh, vertical farming for me is like a bubble. So uh, more and more companies get uh, injections of cash and then turns out to be not really used the correct way. So for example, it's used for AI and automation and um, PhDs and all these things around it instead of like the actual like foundations of a vertical farm in terms of growing. Uh, what's needed for the plants is more uh, the, the right setup in terms of lights, seats, suppliers, all those things around it instead of all the technology and all the automation and all the innovation behind it because it's pretty innovative in itself but you kind of need to take it in steps. So for me it's, it's very much a bubble where people see potentials that definitely is there but it's just not really there yet. So the farm I'm running is a profitable farm, but it's it's a profitable farm because it takes one, hard work, and two, it takes kind of the right investment. So the farm that I'm operating at the moment is a bootstrap farm. So we've done it from the bottom up without any form of investments. And for us, it's been very much a plateau kind of situation, like learn some stuff, develop on that, learn some stuff, develop on that. Um, and then kind of implement it where it's correct. So for example, the farm we have here is very, very low tech, but in a high tech scene. So uh, we don't have uh, AI in this farm. It doesn't make sense with the produce that we make, but we do have automation. So, so it's, for us, it's very much about doing it the right steps so that we turn profitable, one, faster, but also in a more kind of steady stream so it's not a bubble in the same sense. So if I had to do it all over again, I'd do it the same way because the learning curve is very, very steep, but the learning points are also your own. So you kind of, you get a much better handle on the foundations of the business and what's required. I might hire consultants or like the hire like different uh, skill sets that I thought I would start to use from the beginning, but but I don't think I'd have an investor neither for the risks or for the potential rewards because it would be, again, the thing about having a bootstrap business is you do it in steps and you do it in scale, where with an investor, you have to go from zero to 60 pretty fast. So uh, it, it, it's, it's never quite that simple to run an indoor vertical farm. My tip for, for not failing probably be to hire like the relevant consultants in from the beginning like uh, you need someone that can help you with hr you need someone who can help you with food and safety uh, the right logistics partner you need to kind of find all the stepping stones for the business to start off with that you can kind of expand as it goes along 
then of course hard work it, it requires dedication and discipline and if you don't have those it fails uh, all about having the right partners is also about like finding the right equipment partners uh, i can't say how many different supplies we've used on leds on irrigation on seeds and how much we still test every day so so it's all about kind of finding the right supplier for the for the situation you have like tens of thousands of led lighting companies will tell you this is the best and it's world record breaking and all these weird little selling points but the ones who drive vertical farms knows for example that no matter how artificial your climate is you can never really uh, copy it one to one like there will always be some kind of minor changes or, or airflow difficulties or whatever and all that will have an impact on lighting and growth and propagation so like you can never trust something off a web page and every time you do it often you just start to burn money so you need kind of experts that come in and say well for this room i'd do this and this or for this kind of setup i would do this and this because it, it, it doesn't work unless you get like actual eyes on experience amazon alibaba all those different lighting companies all those different suppliers you need to find the right ones because yeah they might work but they probably won't be the best. So, so you kind of need to find something that's structured for you and your purposes. So for, for our journey, we started off in a small scale and with our expansion where we went from like trying to put a pilot up in our living room to kind of grow into bigger and bigger and bigger spaces. We also got a lot of learning from that and that kind of experience is just invaluable because you kind of Going from a private setting where you might do it at home or in the windowsill in the basement or wherever to a storage facility, either if it's 150 square meters or it's 500 or it's 5,000, it's two different worlds, two different uh, complexities. So, so when you kind of scale up, you have to figure out, well, what's the size rooms that you want to do it in, which size can you manage, how fast can you expand, how fast can you grow. So it's, it's kind of all about, again, scalability and efficiency. So my experience with working in within the like vertical farming and CA industry is that it's it's cutthroat. So like uh, you have to prove that you make the same great product as Freeland or uh, organic. You have to prove that you don't have to be more expensive or more energy driven than organic or the other setups that's within uh, greenhouse. So. It's, 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 a, it's a cutthroat business that requires hard work and dedication and you don't come into this in a sleepy fashion.